A female in her 40s presents with chest pain and has a PHS x-ray. What does it show and what is the differential? Let's go through the case. If we look closely at this film, we'll see there's multiple nodules on both sides. Here is one in the left upper zone and look at this larger one overlying the left heart border. Have a look on the right and we'll see the same thing. Once we see these nodules, we need to create a differential that is specific for this patient. In any case where you see multiple nodules on a chest x-ray, you need to consider lung metastases. These are less likely in younger patients, but are always a possibility in any patient you see. In a female in her 40s, we need to be thinking about breast cancer as well as gynecological malignancies such as cervical or endometrial cancer. So once you see the nodules, check for signs of a primary and check for any other signs of malignant disease. In this case, look for any abnormality of the breast contour, which may indicate previous surgery. However, both are normal in this case. Look for any vertebral collapse or sclerosis or any erosion of the bones you can see, and this is normal again in this case. Also assess the mediastinum, looking for any potential nodal enlargement, and again we can see a normal right paratracheal region and the AP window on the left is preserved. Moving on, it's not common for atypical infections to cause discrete larger nodules, but sometimes fungal infection can do it. Here we'll also consider septic emboli, which tend to cause smaller peripheral nodules, which can cavitate and wedge-shaped opacities. Rheumatoid nodules again tend to cause small peripheral nodules, and so this is not typical. In addition, let's also consider vasculitis, namely granulomatous polyangitis, formerly known as vagueness. Finally, there are less common conditions we need to think about in this case. Benign metastasizing layer myomas can give you large, well-defined nodules in females of this age. As the next step, the patient underwent a CT scan, which showed bilateral large lung nodules with the largest lesion within the right upper lobe. However, there was no obvious primary lesion to confirm that these were lung metastases and no other signs of infection. The only other findings were of probable fibroids within the uterus. The patient went on to have a PET CT which showed some of the nodules were mildly avid and there were focal areas of avidity within the breast bilaterally. The patient was referred to the breast unit where the lesions were biopsied under ultrasound and deemed to be benign, thought to represent papillomas. So these were thought to be unrelated to the lung lesions. The patient underwent a CT-guided lung biopsy, with the results suggesting an underlying diagnosis of benign metastasizing layer myomas. This is an uncommon condition where there is a history of benign uterine fibroids, also known as layer myomas, which then metastasize probably through the bloodstream to extra uterine sites, although the underlying pathogenesis is not completely clear. Most commonly infects the lungs, but can also involve lymph nodes and the peritoneum. Patients can present after having a hysterectomy any time from a few months to many years later and can be asymptomatic, although can present with cough, chest pain or shortness of breath. Lung nodules tend to be well-defined and bilateral and can measure up to several centimetres with normal background lung. The lesions tend to be fairly stable and can even regress on their own with hormonal changes. Hormonal manipulation, embolization, and surgery have all been used for symptomatic cases, although there is no set treatment strategy. Now, this isn't the first thing to think about when seeing multiple nodules on a chest x-ray, but it is something I've seen more than once and something that's always worth including in your differential when you see a female patient with unexplained, well-defined lung nodules and a history of fibroids.